Hey guys, this is Sean with Long Long Honeymoon here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the one topic that everyone around the world is obsessed with, propane for newbies. And of course, if you're an experienced RV camper, it's time to get back to the fundamentals. Blocking, tackling, and propane. Propane is a fuel, liquid petroleum gas. Now it is a fuel that has a higher ignition temperature than gasoline. So although it is flammable and dangerous, it is not as flammable as gasoline. <clears throat> Voila. So here we have our two aluminum canisters of propano. A couple things to know about these canisters. They don't last forever. So we have actually had ours recertified because these came as original equipment on our travel trailer. Actually, it is carved into the metal. December 2002 is when this young propane tank came into the world. In our state, once they're 10 or 12 years old, you can have them recertified, but there is a lifespan. Eventually, they'll have to be replaced. When we have these canisters refilled, we have to pull the cover off, we have to detach the canisters from our travel trailer, and we hand them over to the propane refiller facility and let them do the refill. It's not really something you can do yourself. Overall, I find that propane is very reasonably priced, typically, for how much we're able to use it. A lot of people ask us, how long can you use propane when you're traveling with your travel trailer? The truth is, it lasts quite a long time for us unless we're running our heat furnace. More on that in a minute. But for the typical tasks, we don't use large quantities of propane at any one time. So these two 30 pound tanks last us typically for several weeks during camping season. So we've got these two tanks riding around in the front of our travel trailer, positioned safely between the tow vehicle and the trailer body, of course. However, there are some safety issues to consider. It is possible to turn off the flow of propane into your RV. Why would you do that? Well, if you're traveling on the highway from point A to point B and you have an accident, there's the risk that one of your propane tubes or pipes might be broken in the accident and then propane might flow out. Propane is odorless and you can't see it, it's invisible. Some genius in the past had the idea of injecting an odor into propane so you will know a certain smell. You don't really need to know what that substance is called, but it's called the smell or odor that you might pick up from propane wouldn't naturally be there. Naturally, it would have no odor whatsoever. And you can imagine if there's a substance that is flammable and explosive and invisible and odorless, that could be incredibly dangerous because if it's leaking, there are two things that could happen. One, no! it could cause an explosion. Two, it could suffocate people because LPG or propane is heavier than air. So it's gonna be down low. But in theory, if you had a major propane leak, it could reduce the oxygen content of air and people could suffocate or fail to oxygenate for you doctors out there. So let's take a closer look at our propane tanks here on our travel trailer. You can see both of these are currently connected and propane will flow through this hose into a pipe and that pipe flows back into our travel trailer to various appliances. We'll talk about those appliances in just a moment. But a couple things to know up here is you can turn these off. You can close these valves so none of this fuel is flowing into your trailer. We, since we have two tanks, can select which tank we want to use to deliver fuel into our trailer. In this case, we would not want to deliver fuel from this tank because this tank is below empty. And you can see these tanks have gauges thoughtfully placed on top of the tank. Not all propane tanks come equipped with these analog gauges, which is kind of a shame because in my opinion, this is the most effective way to determine how much fuel is in the tank. So here we have a completely empty tank and we have a tank that's about a quarter full. 
So if we want to use this tank, I would rotate the valve in the direction of that tank and open up the valve on top of the tank. And now propane is flowing from this canister into our trailer. So we typically buy propane at places like fuel stations. I'm talking about your ordinary gas stations. Quite often will sell propane. A lot of truck stops will sell propane. And then there are actually dedicated propane refueling facilities. And some campgrounds and national parks may even offer propane refilling services. So you'll see these services really throughout the country in a lot of different places. I haven't seen a great variation in price from one place to the other. I would say we can typically refill each one of these tanks that are 30 pound tanks for about 15 bucks a piece, give or take, 15 or 20 bucks a piece. And depending what appliances we're using inside our camper, that can last us a really long time, especially in summer. A couple of obvious comments. If you smell that unique propane odor, probably not the best idea to light a big fat cigar when you're hanging out next to your propane tanks. If you smell an odor, propane is getting out somehow. Something I've noticed is sometimes when we have our tanks refilled, they're refilled a little too much inside the tank because this is pressurized gas inside the tank. They typically should be filled to about 80, 85% of capacity. And I think sometimes refilling establishments go above that and there's a little overflow valve and some will overflow out. That's just something to be aware of. Now we typically, when possible, we will just tow our trailer up to one of these refill places and we'll pull the tanks off, refill them and put them right back on the trailer. That's kind of the best case scenario. There are times when we're set up in some sort of campground or boondocking site when we will take our tanks and we will put them in the back of our truck and transport them to a refilling facility have them refilled and then bring them back to the trailer. Main thing to know about that is you need to have the tanks in a very secure location when you transport them and they need to be transported in a vertical position. I've heard different explanations for why this is the law. The most interesting certainly is that if they're sideways and there was some sort of explosion that they could be propelled like a rocket to the side which is a fascinating mental image, but probably not something you would want to experience in real life. For us, on the back of our truck, we have that hard tonneau cover that's lockable, and I love the ability to fasten the canisters in place and then pull that cover up snug against the top of the canisters so I know that they can't move. So that's a really important safety consideration anytime you're transporting loose canisters of LPG. So you're probably wondering, what do you use propane for when you're in an RV? Well, the most obvious, probably to most of you, is this appliance right here. <laughs> this is our propane cooktop and oven. Voila! We have fire ready to cook whatever meal your heart desires right there. The other place is inside your oven because oddly enough, I hear from a lot of people who never use their oven because they're scared to light it. So you're really missing out if you have an oven in your RV that is propane and you're not taking full advantage of it. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to light your oven so that you can use it, right? So don't be scared. Get yourself one of these long clickers with a flame on it and get ready to light your oven. So right here is where your pilot light is gonna be when we click it on, okay? See where this says pilot on? We're gonna push in and turn right there. So we're gonna light the pilot light. So I'm gonna use my little clicker, I'm gonna do this, and right there, you can now see that there is a tiny blue flame in there. So your pilot light is lit. That's all I had to do, right? Now that you've stepped away, we're going to turn this knob up here to a higher temperature. And in just a second, you're gonna see that that is going to expand all the way around the burner. So sometimes it takes it just a second and there we go. Perfect. And you can adjust the temperature if you want it to be a little stronger, if you want it to be a little lower. 
it does take a little bit of adjustment getting used to cooking in one of these ovens. They don't cook super evenly, but overall they do a good job. It's great when you're boondocking because it doesn't require any electricity. So on our particular stovetop, this front burner can be lit by twisting this igniter, but these two rear eyes have to be lit manually. So you have to turn on the propane and then you actually have to light them directly. So it can vary from RV to RV. So the other important use for propane, at least for us, and probably the most frequent way we use propane is to cool our refrigerator. Now our refrigerator can run either off of propane or off of AC electricity current. If we're plugged into shore power or running our generator, then usually our refrigerator will be clicked over to AC, but we have the option to run it off of gas as well. Anytime we're dry camping, you know, not at a campsite that has an electrical hookup, we are running our fridge off of gas 95% of the time. It takes very little propane. So if we are using propane really only for our fridge, our propane will last a really long time, like probably a month, if that's the only thing we're using propane for. So there are some fridges in RVs that run off different types of power besides gas and AC electricity. Sometimes they will have the option to run off of DC electricity. We do not have that option on our refrigerator, so I can't speak to that personally, but a lot of you guys out there do have that option. So that's something that you could use instead of propane if you were dry camping or what have you. The third appliance is our water heater. Our water heater can heat water using one of two fuel sources. You can see we have actually two water heater switches. Here's our propane water heater and here's our electrical. We often will indulge in the propane, I have to admit, because it just does a better job heating the water faster. Well, for a 17 year old appliance, not too shabby. So the fourth and final appliance in our RV that uses propane is our so-called heat furnace. It actually burns the fuel and warms our trailer. It works incredibly well. Even though our RV is equipped with an electric heat pump that will blow warm air just out of like the air conditioner, that heat pump isn't very effective at temperatures below 50 degrees. The heat pump does not warm the pipes in our trailer. So in a cold winter day or night, we are probably using our propane furnace. Couple of important things to know about the propane furnace. First of all, it uses a lot of propane. Secondly, the propane furnace uses a lot of electricity. What? Why is the propane furnace using electricity? Well, there are fans that come on and blow the warm air throughout the trailer. Those fans are electricity hogs. So if you are not on shore power and you're just running off the current of your batteries, the DC power provided by your trailer or RV batteries, you run that furnace overnight, you're probably not only gonna put a dent in your propane tanks, you're gonna drain down your battery. We had problems when we were camping in Grand Teton National Park in the first snow of the season when our lead acid batteries were just getting drained down overnight. So we'd wake up the next morning, lights didn't want to come on in the trailer. The batteries were dead and we're of course also using a lot of propane. Now that we have our solar package, I feel confident we can run our heat furnace overnight, use that propane to warm our trailer and we're not going to drain down the entire capacity of our batteries. So we can turn on our heat furnace using our thermostat here. I mean, we have a relatively old school primitive thermostat, but I assume it works. And if I crank up the temperature of the furnace, the thermostat will send a signal to the furnace. It will ignite the propane and it'll begin pumping hot air throughout the trailer. Sorry right, guys, that was a quick look at propane for kindergartners. For those of you out there who are new to RV travel or thinking about getting an RV, cooking, refrigerating, heating water, and heating air inside the trailer. So as you can see, propane is actually a very important part of the entire RV travel package. Even though we got a fancy new solar system, I can guarantee you we will still be using 
quite a bit of propane anytime we're traveling with our RV, assuming there will be a time when we can travel with our RV. I'm just, I'm an optimist. What can I say? I think someday these wheels will roll again and we'll be out there exploring with our face masks and hygienic gloves. So guys, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe, push us over that 200,000 subscriber mark into the great beyond. I'm not sure what happens when we hit that level. I'm expecting fireworks or something. Post a comment, interact, and troll. No, no, please don't troll. Uh, we are Long Long Honeymoon. We will see you next time on our channel. For some reason, we say, lo, lo, ho. Hang in there, guys. We're going to get through this together. Together forever. Baby, let me light your fire. Do we have the rights for that? No, probably not. Come on. Here we go. Oh, well. Look, you guys hear that? You hear that air? Just trust me, it's gonna come on. All you, to help all of you newcomers to RV travel, I'm sorry, LPG. And I'm not talking about the ladies pro golfing tournament. <laughs>